I'm Will Harris, and this is my farm. It's White Oak Pastures in Bluffton, Georgia. Now, I was raised here, and my daddy and my granddaddy was raised here. My great-grandfather came here in 1866. My daughter and I, my daughter's back here with me uh, full time now, are taking this back full circle to where my great-grandfather and grandfather were, raising items here on the farm, slaughtering them here on the farm, and selling them more or less locally. You know, it's, I call it lash, local, artisan, uh, uh, sustainable, and humane. Yeah, those are the, the, the four st uh, legs on the stool that we try to, to be cognizant of. So you, I want you to say whatever. It's cattle, sheep, and uh, chickens and turkeys uh, on what we call the Serengeti grazing models, a rotational grazing model. And we process them right here on the farm. We built a red meat uh, abattoir about three years ago and we're currently almost under construction, almost through with a poultry abattoir. Uh, it'll be the only poultry abattoir in Georgia, Florida, Alabama, or Tennessee that processes free range pastured chickens. We believe that the way we raise our animals is uh, a much better uh, in terms of animal welfare. Uh, we believe it's better in terms of environmental sustainability. Uh, we uh, are certain that it's better for in terms of its economic impact. Uh, we have 44 employees, uh, and we also believe that it's a part of the local food movement, part of the, the dis decentralization of the meat packing industry. I believe that good animal welfare means, for me as the stockman, creating an environment that allows the animals to express their instinctive behavior. And the way to know if you're successful is, do you enjoy watching the animals? Do you enjoy, would you, would you like to take a lawn chair and unfold it and just sit down and watch those chickens scratching and pecking in the pasture? Or those cattle and sheep roaming and, and grazing, or, or in the case of hogs, rooting and wallowing? You know, animals were born with certain uh, predetermined uh, instinctive behaviors and so often through the industrialization of meat production we we don't allow that. Run, run those chickens out. Yeah, yeah. When do y'all think y'all start processing? So many costs have been externalized. You know, uh, uh, in, in the case of, of this farm, uh, out we use no pesticides and no chemical fertilizers. As a result, we've built up the organic matter in our soil to between three and four percent. Can you imagine how much carbon we've sequestered mm -hmm. by built putting that percent of this soil uh, carbon that was once carbon dioxide? Uh, I, I believe that our carbon footprint is a negative number. I don't know how to go about calculating it, but I, I, I truly believe it. And so many um, Americans are completely uh, disconnected from the food production system. I believe that all caring, sophisticated consumers want their food, in my case meat animals, to be raised with good animal welfare, good environmental stewardship, uh, you know, and, and, and fair, you know, fair to the pe people that work on the farms, but there's just a great disconnect, and people don't understand uh, how food is produced. Sophisticated consumers that have uh, studied food production systems and made conscious choices uh, are my customers, and those people have decided to pay more for their food. Mm -hmm. The fact is. When we, as stockmen, give up the tools that science has given us that take cost out of production, we have those costs back to production. And for that, this system 
to perpetuate, people have just got to pay more for their food. Mm -hmm. And many people won't. Yeah, there he is.